copyrighted program created by the Rio Grande Oil Company. Southern Miss Police calling all cars, attention all cars, attention all Los Angeles County Sheriff's cars. Broadcast 131 regarding a dead body found in the irrigation ditch near 2nd Street and Arrowhead Highway in Arcadia. That's all. Rolls and says. broadcasting room of a big city police department. You hear the calls for help coming in over the telephone. Some frantic, some screaming. Thousands of emergency calls every day. Instantly, the police broadcaster flashes these messages to hundreds of radio cars cruising about the city. At each emergency call, one or more police cars roar into top speed. And with sirens screaming, rush to the rescue. To shorten the period between the call for help and the arrival of the police, Leading cities and counties specify Rio Grande cracked gasoline for all emergency cars. Tests have convinced officials that Rio Grande cracked excels ordinary gasolines in getting started quicker, in instant acceleration, and in power. Police cars reach top speed sooner with Rio Grande cracked gasoline. They get to the scene of the crime faster. Yet when the records are checked at the end of every month, Civic officials say Rio Grande Cracked gasoline is more economical than other brands because it actually delivers more miles to the gallon, as well as faster miles. Remember, Rio Grande Cracked is used in more police and emergency cars wherever it is sold than any other brand. You, too, should use this emergency gasoline and enjoy police car performance in your car. You'll get speed and power when you need it for driving emergencies and economy of operation for your pocketbook's sake. Try Rio Grande Crack. And now it is our great pleasure to introduce Sheriff Eugene Bistolou of Los Angeles County. Sheriff Bistolou. Good evening. The case you will hear tonight deals with an Oriental murderer. Of all the racial groups which live among us in the West, the Orientals are among the most law-abiding and, as a rule, give us the least trouble. But when an Oriental is involved in a crime, the investigating officers face a difficult task. The philosophy of the Asiatic, his psychology, his viewpoint is so completely different from ours that an experienced officer must be assigned to such cases. The manner in which Chief Criminal Deputy William Bright, who was at the time head of the homicide squad, handled this case, scarcely leaving his office, is, I believe, an example of the technique of which our office is justly proud. We have substituted the old-fashioned third degree with common sense, shrewd psychology, and quick thinking. Listen carefully as Chief Bright finds his way through a maze of oriental intrigue. It is the morning of November 20th, 1930. Captain Bright, head of the homicide squad of the Los Angeles Sheriff's Office, is just entering his office. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Anything new this morning? Nothing in the mail. But Deputy Sheriff Plow is waiting to see you. Send him in. Yes, sir. You come in, please. Good morning, Claude. What's up? Murder. Yeah? Let's have it. Well, there was a body discovered in an irrigation ditch out in Arcadia early this morning by a couple of mechanics on their way to work. The victims are Mexican. Papers on the body identify him as Luz Mata, a fruit grower from the Imperial Valley. How was he killed? His head and face were badly beaten, skull crushed, and his throat cut. Mm, so a job, eh? Rather. Find anything at the scene? Well, no weapons discovered, but we picked up several unburned and three burned matches near the body. There's one legible tire print, which I had photographed. Also, footprints around the body as though there'd been a struggle. I got pictures of them, too. The body's in the autopsy room at the morgue. Any other identification besides the papers on the body? Yes, I have positive identification by Martha's sister. He paid her a visit last night with his partner, Jose Gonzalez. Everything points to Gonzalez as a murderer. How's that? Well, he and Martha came to Los Angeles together to deliver a load of produce. Martha intended to collect several hundred dollars owing him. 
Marta's sister says he'd already received some of it when she saw him last night. But it looks like Gonzalez bumped him off for his money. He's got an old car's broadcast out to pick him up. Yes, Doctor. Come in. I've uh, just finished the autopsy on Martha. What did you find? Well, it's rather a strange case. He was killed by a deep fracture in the skull. The throat was cut more than an hour after death. What? Are you sure? Positive. Rigor mortis had set in long before the throat was cut. No blood flowed from the wound. Yeah, that's a new one on me. Mm, me too. How long had he been dead, Doctor? Mm, about six hours. That would place the murder around 1 a.m. this morning. That checks. We talked to a gardener out there who worked all day yesterday in a field not 50 feet away from the scene of the crime. And he didn't notice anything unusual all day. Yes, also the burned matches would seem to indicate that the man was murdered after dark. Oh, Cloud. Yes, sir. I want to see those photographs of the footprints and tire tread as soon as they're ready. Yes, sir. And also look up uh, Gonzalez in our files. See if he has a record. Right away, sir. After a thorough search of the files, Deputy Cloud returns to the captain's office. I can't find any record on Gonzalez, Captain. What? Oh, that's too bad. You know, Cloud, I've been thinking. There's something mighty funny about this case. Gonzalez is a Mexican, I suppose. Yes, sir. Well, a Mexican would use his knife first. He wouldn't come back an hour later and slit his victim's throat just to make sure he was dead. Yeah, that's right. This thing might almost be called a murder mystery. Say, <laughs> I'll bet you a new hat we sell them. <laughs> I won't take you up. Not with your record of 98% solutions. Oh, by the way, Captain, here's the pictures of the footprints and the tire marks. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, these footprints are too blurred. They don't tell anything. If this is a clear tire impression, that ought to lead us somewhere. A cloud, I want you to... Take pardon, Captain. Yes, sir. We just picked up Gonzalez. That's fine. Where is he? Outside. He was driving Martha's truck when we arrested him. I took him through the morgue on the way up, and he identified the body. Where's the truck? Parked on the Spring Street side of the building. Fine. Cloud, while I talk to this bird, you go over that truck. See if any of the tires compare with that print. Yes, sir. All right, Ayers. Bring in our suspect. Yes, sir. Come on in, Gonzalez. This is Captain Bright. Oh, uh, sit down, Gonzalez. We want to ask you some questions about the murder of Luz Mata. Yes, senor. Did you murder him? Por Dios, no, senor. You were arrested driving your truck. Oh, si. I was on my way back to my rancho in Imperial Valley. I did not know Luz was dead until the officer told me. When did you see him last? Last night. Where was he then? At the home of a Japanese gardener. Know his name? Oh, si. A Frank Nakamura. Where were you? Sitting outside in the truck. I waited there from 8 o'clock until after midnight. He did not come out. So I drove into Los Angeles and went down to the market looking for him. And you never saw him? No. Not until just now. Down in the mall. You're sure that's him? See, that was Louis. Well, start from the time you left the Imperial Valley and tell me where you went and what you did. We drove up from the Imperial Valley from Nile and, and took our food to market. We delivered this yesterday morning. Then Master went to the Mirador Drive Fruit Company to pick up a check. Did he get it? Oh, see, it was for... Uh, it, it was for $140, I think. He got some other money from his customers in the market. And then we drove out to see this Japanese gardener. Owed him $285. The Japanese told us to come back that afternoon and he'd have the money. So we went to see Mata's sister. And then we had a drink or two... And we went back to the gardener's house. What time was that? Oh, that must be about 7 o'clock. I sat in the truck, and Mata went inside, and he never came out as I saw. And you waited there till after midnight? And you didn't go into the house? No, senor. I just waited. Waited? Five or six hours? Were you drunk? No, senor. I do not drink. Well, did Mata drink? No, he did not drink neither. But you just told me that you and Mata had a couple of drinks before you went to see the Japanese. Uh, now, what do you mean? Well, I, I, I mean, I mean we don't drink much, you know. We, we do not get drunk. Oh, I see. Yeah. Where does this Frank Nakamura live? Out in Arcadia, on Sierra Street, I believe. And you never went in the house all the time you waited? No, no, senor. Sure of that? Positive. Did you murder Mata? Huh? No, no, senor. I told you. He was my best friend. I would not think All of All right, Gonzalez. I'm sorry, but I'll have to hold you upstairs in jail in technical custody until I've investigated your statement. Book him on suspicion, Ayers. Yes, sir. 
And if Cloud's back, send him in. Right. Come along, Gonzalez. Uh, a likely cock and bull story. Well, Cloud, what about those tires on Gonzalez's truck? They don't compare with this fiction. Are you sure? Positive. Uh, that's too bad. Why, Gonzalez is a made-to-order suspect. His story doesn't hang together. Claims he sat outside a Japanese gardener's house for five hours last night waiting for Mata. And then, when Mata didn't show, he didn't even go into the house, but he went back to town to look for him. Hmm. That sounds phony enough. Sure does. Listen, when that fellow had his head beaten in, there must have been some blood. Well, there was plenty out there. His throat may not have bled when it was cut, but he sure bled from those abrasions. Good. Have Gonzalez's clothes examined in the lab for evidence of blood. Take the scrapings from his fingernails and see if there's blood in them. I can't give up our best suspect so easily. But in the meantime, I'm going to have a talk with this Frank Nakamura. Sit down, Mr. Nakamura. I want to ask you some questions. Oh, yes. Uh, may I know for why I'm bringing here about policemen? Sure. You know a Mexican fellow called Luz Mata? Oh, Mata. Oh, mata son. Oh, yes, sir. I know him. He was murdered last night. Murder? mata son murder? Oh, no. Oh, this is come out being. Uh, I didn't ask you to come down here to kid you. Luz Mata was murdered last night. Oh, that's too bad. Mata came to your house yesterday, didn't he? Oh, yes, sir. He come uh, one, two times. Tell me about it. Well, uh... He come for paying money I owe to him. He come uh, one time in the morning, uh, but uh, I'm not having money. He come uh, back at uh, oh, 7 o'clock. I pay him money. How much? Oh, I pay uh, $600 for dates uh, both other time, and uh, I pay $285 for dates uh, both uh, this time. $885. Mm, that's a lot of money. Did you get a receipt? Oh, yes, sir. I am uh, having a receipt. Where is it? Oh. I leave with seat at home. When Mother came to your house, was he alone or was someone with him? Tall uh, Mexican fellow with him both times. The second time he came, did this tall Mexican fellow come in the house? Oh, yes, sir. Both the fellow coming in the house, uh, drinking sake and uh, talking. Uh, we do business. Uh, we have a oh, nice time. Drink much sake? Oh, maybe so. Two Mexican fellows, they uh, get pretty drunk. You're sure they were drunk? Oh, yes, sir. They are pretty drunk. When did they leave? Oh, they leave... Uh, after getting money and uh, having a drink of sake. Well, I guess that's about all I wanted to know, Nakamura. Thanks for coming down. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Nice clean overalls you got there, Nakamura. Wash them yourself? Oh, uh, what the place? Your overalls. I say they're nice and clean. Look like they've been washed lately. Oh, yes, sir. I washed them. I uh, washed them this morning. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, I washed them myself. You see, my wife, uh, well, she got much to do with the kids, so I uh, washed well, them. Well, you're a model husband. Thanks again for coming down. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you. Hello, Eddie. Japanese just left my office. Have him tailed. Send a man out to his house in Arcadia to meet him when he gets home. Get the receipts from him for $885 paid to lose Mata for fruit. Tell the man who goes out to the house to look around and get a sample of the washing water from the Nakamura's washing machine or laundry tub or whatever they have, or from the ground where they throw their water. Yeah, that's right. Is Cloud out there? Good. Send him in. Well, Cloud, how about the tires on Nakamura's car? Well, they don't tally with that picture either. Uh, this is beginning to be discouraging. Did you search him when you brought him in? Yes, sir. Explained it was a routine procedure. Find anything? Well, I got a scrap of paper with his handwriting on it, and these... Mm, matches. The blue and yellow head. Yeah, they're the same kind of matches we found at the scene of the murder. Yes, but on the other hand, they don't mean a great deal. There must be 100,000 people in Los Angeles carrying matches with blue and yellow heads in their pockets. What's on a scrap of paper? Just a notation about vegetable spray. Valuable as a specimen of his handwriting, though. Mm -hmm. uh, this case begins to look bad for Gonzalez. Mm -hmm. How's that? Well, if Nakamura is telling the truth, Gonzalez is lying. The Japanese claims he and Mata got drunk out there last night. Mm -hmm. Still, you haven't any positive evidence on Gonzalez. No, but he was at the proper place at the proper time to commit the crime. And he lied in his statement. Yes, and on the other hand, Gonzalez might have passed out in the truck outside the Japanese house, and anything could have happened to Mata while he was unconscious. Yeah, that's true enough. I, I don't feel that Gonzalez is the guilty party. Why not? Well, I, I just got some reports from the boys who sent down to the Imperial Valley to check on Mata and Gonzalez. 
According to all they can discover, those two were like brothers. Never been in trouble beyond getting drunk occasionally. Well, they've been pals for years. Well, maybe you're right. I confess this thing's got me up a tree. Yeah? Oh, all right. Send him in. Who is it? Somebody with some information on the case. Can't tell what it is. Come in. Uh, Captain Bright? Yes? I'm Howard Downing. I manage the branch bank at Figaro and Pico. Yes? I have a little item I think should be brought to your attention in connection with the Martha murder. Yes? What is it? Well, this morning a young boy brought a check into the bank to be cashed. That check was made out to lose Martha by the Mirador Dried Fruit Company. Did you cash it? Yes. After we asked him who sent him, and he told us a dark fellow who looked like a Mexican, it seemed to be all right. Lots of the men from the market send errand boys to have their checks cashed. Have you got the check with you? Uh, yeah, yes, here it is. Mm. For $140. That's the one Gonzalez told us about, Cloud. Yeah. I didn't know about the murder. I wouldn't have cashed the check, I can tell you. I didn't read about it until this afternoon's papers came out. Now, what I want to know is, how can I get my money back? This will go hard with me, you know. Now, listen, Mr. Downey. How can we tell you when you'll get your money back when we haven't caught the murderer yet? You leave this check with us. Well, that's the only proof I have. Do you think we're liable to mislay it? Why, this check may be the key to our case. Cloud. Yes, sir? Have the handwriting expert compare this signature on the back of the check for samples of Mata's, Nakamura's, and Gonzalez's handwriting. Let me know what he says as soon as possible. Well, Captain, I got bad news on that handwriting comparison. Yeah? How come? Well, our expert says that the signature on the check doesn't compare with Mata's handwriting, with Nakamura's, or with Gonzalez. Yeah, this thing is beginning to get my goat. Mata was bumped off for his money. Somebody even forged an endorsement of a check made out to him. Now, we got two perfectly good suspects, and neither of them tie in with forgery. I'm willing to admit I am up a blind alley. Captain Bright speaking. Yes. Yes. A 207 McDowell Street, huh? All right. Fine work. Yes, I'll take care of it. Keep after him. Well, Cloud, maybe this is it. Mm, what's that? That was the man I sent tailing Nakamura. He reports that Nakamura stopped on his way home at 207 McDowell Street and had a long conversation with a Japanese at that address. Come on. We'll pay a visit over there. Good afternoon, ma'am. We're from the sheriff's office. Yeah? What do you want? Do you take rumors here? Yes. Japanese? Mm, I have a few. Well, I understand the Japanese by the name of Frank Nakamura stopped by here about an hour ago to see a friend of his. Well, there was a little Japanese come by here a while ago. Who did he see? A rumor of mine by the name of Tanaka. You, Tanaka. Sort of a shifty little rat, to tell the truth. How long has he been rooming here? Oh, just came in the other night. What night? Night before last, I think it was. What room has he got? Number four, down the hall, second door to the left. Is he in? No. I think I saw him go out. Got a key to his room? Yes. Open it for us, will you? All right. Come this way. There you are. Thanks. Now you just go on about your work as though we weren't here, accepting that you might let us know if Tonica comes back. Yeah, all right. I will. Come on, Cloud. Let's put the place over. Hmm. Nothing much to see. A couple of suits and covers. There's a handbag, but it's empty. Wait a minute. Here's something in this drawer. Huh? What? Discharge papers from San Quentin made out to you, Tonica. Went up from San Francisco on robbery. So, at last we run into a guy with a record. Uh, just because he served the term in the pen for robbery doesn't make him a murderer. No, that's right. Let's take a look down the hall. Well, did you find what you was looking for? Oh, more or less. Who lives on this floor? Mm, number one is occupied by a Japanese. What's his name? Moto. T. Moto. And who lives in number two? Is Tamagori. Japanese. Yes. There's another in number three. What's his name? D. Coney. Well, that accounts for all the rooms on this floor, but this one here at the end of the hall. Who's in it? Hmm. That's the bathroom. Only one on the floor? Yes. Come on, Cloud. Let's look at it. What's so interesting about a bathroom? Sometimes you can find out more about people in their bathrooms than any place else. You know, uh-huh, just as I thought, an old-fashioned bathtub on legs. Mm, what of it? Oh, nothing. Except that they make excellent hiding places. For what? Almost anything. 
It takes a more meticulous housekeeper than our landlady seems to be to clean out behind them. Uh, hand me that curtain rod, will you, Claude? Yeah. What are you going to do? I'm going fishing behind the bathtub. Uh-uh. I got a bite. Well, well, will you look at that? A revolver. Come on, let's have a look at it. One shell's been fired, five intact. Look, the one that's been fired has been fired twice. Mm. Dark stains on the butt. Looks like blood to me. Got your benzodrine outfit with you? Yeah. All right. See whether it tests for blood. Okay. Yeah, it's turning green. Yeah, the stains of blood, all right. Which doesn't prove that this is the weapon used to beat out Luz Mata's brain. But it's a stench it was used to pistol with somebody. Stay here, Cloud. Pick up those four Japanese when they come in. I'll send somebody to stake out on you as soon as I get back to headquarters. Yes, sir. Back at headquarters, Deputy Penfraze is waiting for Captain Bright. Well, Penfraze? I just returned from Nakamura's. He didn't have any receipt for money paid to Mata, so I took him in custody. He's upstairs. I got some scrapings from the washing machine and water from the drain out at his house. They're being analyzed now. Good. Nakamura still got on those clean overalls? Yes. Have them analyzed, too. And also get the scrapings from under Nakamura's nail. Yes, sir. On your way out, tell Ayers to join Cloud down at 207 McDowell Street. He's taken out some more Japanese. Oh, and by the way, wire this gun number to the manufacturers and ask them to trace it. first Japanese to be picked up at the McDowell Street stakeout is Hamagori. He is brought to headquarters and some suspicious stains on his trousers are immediately analyzed. He is then led into Captain Bright's office. Hamagori, the stains on your trousers are blood. How did they get there? Uh, I not know how they got there, but these trousers, they were being worn not only by me. Who else was? My trousers were lent to you, Tanaka, by Kony, a friend of mine. Tanaka again. That's all you know about the trousers? Yes. Well, I know. All right, Sergeant. Take him out. This way. You know, Pent Ray's, that's a plausible enough story. If that Jeff knew there were blood stains on his trousers, he'd certainly have washed them out. Yeah, that's right. And by the way, uh, here's the lab report on the drain water from Nakamura's and also on Nakamura's overall. Yeah, both show blood, eh? Well, we're getting warmer, Pent Ray's. Now we've got two suspects with blood on them. The other Japanese from the rooming house substantiate Hamagori's story about Tanaka borrowing the trousers. But Tanaka himself has not appeared. A day goes by while the deputies continue to stake out the rooming house, and during which the manufacturers of the blood-stained gun report that the last trace they had of the weapon was when it was registered at the Rock Island Arsenal in 1905. The following morning, Deputy Sheriff Cloud brings a strange document into Captain Bright's office. Hey, Cap, get a look at a load of this. Why, what's up, Cloud? Plenty. Letter came from Nakamura in this morning's mail. Just about breaks our case. What is it? Well, apparently the Japanese confessed the murder to his wife when she visited him in jail yesterday and told him he was going to act crazy. And here's her reply. She says here, Pitiable, lamentable, my dear Makoto Nakamura. When I saw your haggard face before me, I feel very sad. Your final fate is near. You are acting, uh, acting I think it is, like crazy, and is sent to the hospital. Then when the six children grow up, this will be a great stumbling block for their future. Also, your ancestors will be greatly ashamed. Do not understand this. For you to try to save your life this way is wrong. Think of these six loving children when they grow up their future will be darkened. This does not reveal a parent's true feeling and love. Do you think? Although you may get uh, angry, uh, that's what it is, I am worrying about the future of the children. I swallow my tears and make this final request of you. Act like a man and a samurai. Now, she goes on and on like this, for pages pleading with him to confess so the kids won't have a blot against him. That's well. Maybe this will crack the case. Hey, let me see that letter. Yeah, here you are. And bring Nakamura down here. I want
want him to see it. The little Japanese, pale and nervous from his two days in jail, is led into the captain's office, given the letter to read while the two officers watch him intently for the slightest change of expression. Halfway through, tears come to Dr. Nero's eye. And by the time he has finished the letter, he is sobbing. Well, Frank, how about it? We know what's in that letter. There's no use of trying to lie about it any longer. Yes. And aside from that, I should think you'd want to come clean after what your wife says there. Yes, sir. I'm telling her everything. I'm not holding back any thoughts till I got the facts. Oh, that's fine, Frank. Well, start talking. Well, uh... When I'm not uh, coming to my house for money, I uh, have not the money. Uh, my friend uh, Tanaka was with me. He said, uh, oh, I have an idea. Uh, tell him uh, we're having to go to the country for money. So uh, I tell him Mata, and uh, Mata saying uh, he'd go with us. Well, uh, we get the Mata drunk. Uh, then um, three of us uh, drive into the country. When we get out, Tanaka stop the car. We put the gun to Mata's back and pull the trigger. But the gun will go off. That accounts for the two hammer marks on the empty shell, Cloud. Yeah. Go ahead, Frank. Well, the uh, uh, gun will go off. Now, uh, Tanaka hitting Mata with the bottom end of gun. I uh, run away. But uh, Tanaka called me back. He having a blister on the hand from hitting, so I hit the Mata some more. He roll over, and I think he's dead. Then what did you do? Oh, we drive him to my house. Whose car were you in? Oh, in my car. No, I want you to tell the truth, Frank. We have a photograph of the tire mark at the scene of the murder. And it doesn't correspond with any of the tires on your car. Oh, can't for explaining that. Uh, we blow up tire on the way home. Run on the rim. Spoiled tire. So, I buy a second-hand tire at the gas station and throw all tire away. How's that for the bad brakes, Cloud? The only tire mark we have is the one that blew out. But, Frank... Mata's throat was cut. You haven't accounted for that. Oh, I come into that. Uh, after we get home, Tanaka worried maybe Mata not dead. Or maybe he's coming back to life and talk to him. Or tell who beat him. So we go back to the place where Mata is and uh, cut his throat. So no doubt he's dead. <laughs> Nakamura grows more valuable, goes on and on with the bloody details of his crime. Within an hour, the early editions of the afternoon papers are carrying the story of the confession. And late that afternoon, a Japanese walks into the Boyle Heights police station. What can I do for you, buddy? I am under the impression that I am wanted by the police. Yeah? What for? Murder. Who's murder? I am Yul Tanaka, who murdered the Mexican Mata. I perceive that it would be useless for me to try to escape now that my weak will to accomplish has sold everything. Therefore, I save you in a further trouble. Will you kindly place handcuffs on my wrist? complicated jigsaw puzzle of crime was put into place when the handwriting expert at headquarters identified Tanka's writing as that of the forgery on Mata's check. Gonzalez, of course, was completely cleared of any complicity in the murder. And Nakamura and Tanaka were quickly brought to trial, found guilty of murder, and sentenced to San Quentin Penitentiary for life. Thank you, Charles Sister Ladies and gentlemen, when you hear the screaming siren, when police cars roar past, remember Rio Grande cracked gasoline, the gasoline that gives police car performance. When airplanes fly overhead, remember Sinclair motor oil, for they lubricate over 100,000 air miles a day on the leading transport lines in America. When trains thunder past, remember that Sinclair oils lubricate over 150 leading American railroads. And when you think of oils and lubricants, think of Sinclair. For Sinclair is one of the world's largest makers of lubricants of all time. With more than 120 different grades, the largest and most complete line of lubricants in America. Independent retailers of Rio Grande cracked gasoline have been trained in the scientifically correct application of these many Sinclair lubricants to your car. 
They have an up-to-the-minute record, checked and approved by every car manufacturer, showing exactly when and how to lubricate every moving part of your car. If you want your car accurately lubricated, according to the manufacturer's specification, take it to your Rio Grande dealer and ask for Sinclair Scientific Lubrication. It costs no more. And while you're in the Rio Grande station, ask for a free copy of the Calling All Cars News and see the 15 different articles in the complete junior detective outfit which Rio Grande gives to boys and girls absolutely free. Attention all Los Angeles County Sheriff's cars. Cancellation broadcast 131 regarding a murder near Arcadia. Suspects in this case now in custody. That's all. Rolls and...